Okay, picture this. You're at your local grocery store running errands. You head over to pay at the register, and while you're waiting in line, you casually scan the place. There she is. A cute girl, just your type, locks eyes with you, and to your surprise, she smiles. Maybe she's into you. But instead of stepping up, you hesitate. You don't know what to do or say, so she goes about her day and you missed your shot. It honestly amazes me how many opportunities are lost because guys don't know how to react in those situations. Once you realize how easy it is to turn that smile into something more, you probably laugh at your old self and how nervous you got for no reason. So let's tackle this. By the end of this video, I want to give you six actionable steps that will turn her smile into something more because the last thing I want for you is to wonder, what if, what if I smiled back? What if I had the courage to approach her? So many guys think that acting like some cold alpha male makes them look cool and it's what girls want. And no, that is not the approach that you should take. First impressions aren't only about what you say or see, but what you feel. You want her to feel good energy, a good vibe when she's talking to you. This is why it's so important to lead with positive and relaxed energy from the beginning. Something that guys forget is that girls are just as nervous about rejection and interaction with a new person as you are. So when that cute girl smiles at you, Loosen up, man. Ditch the weird, overly serious look. Give her a soft smile or a smile back and see how she responds. This shows that you're friendly and open. That's why step number one is to reciprocate her smile. It's the quickest way to show her that you're genuine, positive and approachable. But there's more. After the smile, pay attention to her behavior because it's the next reaction that counts. Does she immediately look away and then break that eye contact or does she maintain an open body language? Because unless she switches and shuts it down, it's likely she's just giving you what we call a choosing signal. This is something really important that will stop you from ever looking like a creep, which I'll explain in detail in step three. Okay, so you've caught eyes and she's still smiling. What now? This is when you start to feel the clocks ticking, right? You know you need to act immediately you need to do something but one thing that you can't do is panic you see when a girl gives you a choosing signal it's a subtle sign only made when she's interested she wants you to approach her you know when you see those cringe videos of guys getting brutally rejected in public most of the time it's because they approached without getting any signal from the girl they approach too quickly and it comes off as aggressive and look I understand how scary going up to her can be but the fact that she's already receptive is a great start those videos definitely don't help in easing that tension, but sorry, I have to say, the worst thing that you can do right now is stall. Avoid making her assume that you're another unconfident guy who thinks that she's cute, but is too scared to go up to her. You need to stand out. You need to leave a good impression. So here's the key step. In your head, count down from three, and as soon as you hit zero, ignore everything, no matter what, stride over there and break the ice. Now, I know this is probably the hardest part. Once you approach, you need to say something to open the conversation. What do you say? And there's no one size fits all answer. There's no magic pill. But what if I told you that the secret to being irresistibly attractive isn't what you need to do, but what you need to stop doing? Because you see, back in 2015, Australian psychologists ran a speed dating experiment and discovered something surprising about attractive masculine traits. After receiving a choosing signal, most men try and respond in the perfect way. They try to act perfect, which leads them to overthink and do too much when they're interacting with women. They're trying too hard. And can you guess the common trait that these psychologists found in the best interactions they saw in all of this experiment? Maybe a specific opener, a phrase, a certain topic. It's actually none of those. It's a lot more simple than you would believe. The best interactions came down to not what words were being said, but rather how they were being said. Think about the way you act around your friends, the way you're hanging out with them, you're communicating with them, having a good time. You're probably relaxed, you're probably playful, you're authentic, a little vulnerable sometimes. Well, that's the secret. These traits allow us to be truly present and feel connected. Loosen up, stop trying so hard. Don't put the girl on a pedestal. She's a normal human being who you can treat just like a friend. So after counting down from three and walking over just like you would with a friend you haven't seen in a while, open with a genuine compliment, a relevant question about your environment, maybe something around you or a joke to be honest what you say doesn't even matter the point is just show that you're relaxed show that you're fully present show you're a non-judgmental guy and when mixed with confidence girls find this incredibly attractive then all you have to do is keep the conversation going without making things awkward you know I remember when I was younger and I moved to the US from Brazil and I was pretty introverted I was really shy and in the rare moments that I would get noticed when I wasn't invisible to a good-looking girl I would still hesitate to talk to them I was scared I thought 
I'm probably not cool enough. She's gonna judge my accent. You know, my English is not really good. And as a result, anytime I try to talk to girls, I just felt awkward. Like I got awkward and obviously it went nowhere. I had no game. I had no game. I was overthinking everything. And those failures made me more and more scared of talking to girls. It made it worse. But one day everything changed. I learned that it's all about the mirror. The energy that I projected was usually the energy that the girl reflected. If I had negative thoughts and I tried approaching girls, the conversation would turn out low energy, boring, because I was scared. I had no confidence and she could pick up on those cues. But if I was having a good day, if I woke up feeling good, I went to the gym, I was hanging out and having fun with my friends during the day, then I saw a beautiful girl, that same interaction would be upbeat and fun and carefree and relaxed. So. I have a secret to tell you. After introducing yourself to the cute girl, remember, human communication is 55% nonverbal, 38% tonal, and only 7% verbal. Your body language, eye contact, and even the conviction in your voice lay the foundations for how your interactions will go. Perfect words don't mean anything if your confidence and your internal beliefs don't actually match. It's like going up with a girl with the perfect funny pickup line, right? It's like you've been practicing this pickup line, you read about it somewhere, it looks really good, it sounds great, but then when you deliver it, you deliver it in a monotone, boring voice, your facial expression doesn't change. The girl who initially smiled at you will pick up on those cues and it's gonna make things awkward. She's gonna think this is an awkward guy. That was that supposed to be funny? I'm not really sure what's happening here. Overthinking will 100% mess up your delivery because you're nervous. And it's gonna show up externally through your posture, your stutters, or any other nonverbal cues. So remember, to avoid looking weird or not confident, don't be too hard on yourself before, during, or after the interaction. This isn't a test. Think of it as a fun opportunity to have a chat, to connect, to learn, and to improve your skills of talking to girls. But look, of course, as fun as connecting and talking and practicing can be, let's be real, you're probably hoping to take this to the next stage. So how do we make sure that we spark that attraction and stay away from getting friend zoned? Which might be the worst case scenario. Well, you're almost there. You notice her choosing signals, you approached her, you're now fully present, you're having a nice relaxed conversation without feeling anxious, without feeling scared. The next big step, how do you spark genuine attraction? And funny enough, I learned this from Tony Robbins, from, from all people, so it's about to get deep. It's called polarity, and it happens when you show your masculine side, which causes her to embrace her feminine side. This polarity creates a magnetic pull of attraction. It's what you feel when you're around someone who perfectly complements your personality. Being unable to predict how they will respond keeps you slightly on edge, and the interaction just becomes more mysterious, it becomes more exciting, it becomes more fun. This polarity is like a dance between the masculine and the feminine. It's the pull that you feel in a great conversation. She might make you laugh, or your reserved and stoic character attracts her in. You're both polarized by each other. But on the flip side, we have depolarization, which happens when neither of you embody any clear masculine or feminine traits. So you both act similar to one another, and it's not necessarily a deal breaker, but if you don't want that spark to fizzle out, if you don't want to end up in the friend zone, you have to avoid this. Here's how to create this polarity. First, you need to show confidence. Simply approaching and initiating the conversation, you've already done this. Most girls respect a man who is secure enough to approach them and to take that risk, right? Because the majority of guys don't. They don't have the courage to go and talk to them. So when you've counted down from three to zero, then you approach, you're ahead. So let's get going. Second, at some point early in the conversation, make it clear that you find her attractive. If you're interested, you have to make it clear. And you can do that by flirting with her slightly, nothing aggressive. For example, you can say something like, stylish girl shopping for dinner ingredients, so you're probably a good cook. It seems too good to be true, what's the catch? Immediately, she knows that you're interested in being more than friends, but you did it in a nice, respectful way. And third, if she continues to be receptive with that relaxed and positive energy, ask her out, get her number, get her IG. Say something like, Emily, you're cute, you seem cool, I know you have to get going here, but how about we grab drinks or dinner? What's your number? These three techniques will create that polarity and let you immediately know if she's interested or not. Overall, when you showcase your confident masculine energy, which is being clear on your intentions, taking action, not being afraid to lead, and remaining present, you're gonna attract girls who have that feminine energy. The difference between getting stuck in the friend zone and having strong chemistry is immediately creating this polarity as soon as you meet. And just like that, you finally get her number. But there's one last hurdle. You have to leave with grace without making it awkward. 
awkward. No matter what you do, don't linger. A lot of guys linger around and then it gets awkward. Say goodbye, smile, tell her you're gonna send her a text. Psychologists have found that people strongly remember how you made them feel over what you said, looked, or even sounded like. So it's really important at the end of that interaction to leave on a positive note. Basically, the goal here is to leave her with a smile. So when she thinks of you or when she tells her friends about you, she remembers that feeling, she remembers that smile. But make sure to watch out for red flags. I listed a bunch of these red flags that you should stay away from in this video right here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.